Well, Ross, it's really a treat to get to interview you. Um, not only have you been a big part in my story, but I've enjoyed watching your story, and uh, especially being the pioneer that you are, going to New York and then coming to Knoxville, Tennessee, building a soundstage, producing all those TV shows, but then that being the birthplace for HGTV. It's an amazing story and the, the moves that you've made. So, Ross, let's start with New York. You moved from Knoxville to New York. What led up to that? Uh, I was in the Air Force. Uh, I, my dad told me uh, in high school, uh, this Korean War looks real bad. They'll call you'll, you'll get drafted. So I joined the Air National Guard to avoid uh, being activated into the service. And two weeks after I graduated from high school, I was in the Air Force. Wow. They activated me. Man. And I went, they sent me to Biloxi, Mississippi, to Keesler Air Force Base. Huh. And uh, my, my wife called me one day and said, Mother said we could get married if you could get a three-day pass. <sighs> and so uh, I got a three-day pass, and my, my marriage is a long story. It's, wow. I'll tell you about that. So you were, what, 18, 19 when you got married? 19. Wow. And we've been married now 67 years. Man. Uh, she's a, That's amazing. She's, she's, but anyway, we, uh, her father and mother drove us down to New Orleans for the weekend. And on the way down, I went in to pay the uh, gas attendant when we got gasoline. And sitting on the counter was a 12-inch round screen black and white TV. I had never seen one. Really? This was 1951. And I said, gee whiz, that is amazing. Milton Burrow was on, you know. And I'd heard about television, but I never had the opportunity to see one. And, First uh, time you saw television, right there. Right there. First time I saw in 1951 on, on a service station outside of uh, New Orleans. That's amazing. Yeah. And they, I, uh, I, uh, from that point on, that's all I wanted to do is television. Something yeah. just. That's right. So I came home and I had two children, and then my uh, I, I asked my wife if she'd move in with my mother and father for a year or two while I went to New York to, to NYU and the American Academy. Ah. So I went up, took exams, and finally I got into school up there. It's amazing that I got in, but anyway. Uh, for for the first year and a half, I was up there by myself. I got a job as a page boy at NBC. Wow, at forty five dollars a week. And was this in Rockefeller Center at that point? Yes. Oh yeah. It, wow. It was in the Rockefeller Center, and uh, so uh, I my first show was Howdy Doody. <laughs> I would take care of the peanut gallery, <laughs> and uh, well, one day we had an equipment failure. And so I entertained the kids with games and things to keep them in the studio because uh, without them, we, don't, we couldn't do the show. Right. And uh, so uh, finally, after we had laid down the, the show, uh, equipment got back uh, in order. Uh, I got a note from uh, Roger Muir, the producer, who thanked me for what I did that day, taking care of the kids, because without them, we couldn't have got the show laid down. And he says, if I ever do anything for you, I'm in 906. Huh. Well, I went straight to 906. And, <laughs> and, and uh, his administrative assistant, Bobby Horn, said, Roger, that young man that helped us yesterday is out here. Well, come on back. And I went back, and he said, what can I do for you? And I said, I want to get into television. Be a, and, and he said, you're in television. So uh, I got my first production job uh, with Howdy Doody. And, wow. Uh, and then, then I kept getting better jobs. 